Hello friends, welcome back. So macOS 15.4 is officially out. I've been testing it for over a month and these are all the new features and changes that this software update has to offer. One of the first new things that you are going to see after you update and restart your Mac, there is a new welcome screen to Mac with Apple Intelligent themed text and font colors if you have a Mac that supports Apple Intelligence. Another unique change that has been implemented with this update has to do with the system settings. Now if you go into the general and software update you're going to see that this window has been updated it's sort of been modernized and the font text as well has changed slightly and at the same time you can see once your mac is up to date you're going to see a green check mark that looks like this and it's going to tell you that your mac is up to date and it's going to tell you the version that you are on right there Finally, a big change that the iPhone has always had since iOS 18.2 is now here with this macOS 15.4 and that is mail categories which a lot of people pushed for. Kudos to you if you were among those and you can see right here when you open up the mail app, you can see the mail categories on the top section right there if you don't see them and you need to enable them after you update you can always go to the view tab right there and if this show mail categories tab is actually unchecked you can select it and then it depending on your selection it's going to enable or disable the mail categories so right here you can see the different categories that we have the main one is primary and once you click on a category it automatically signs you to the all mail so i'm just clicking as you can see so primary is what you are seeing right here and then if i go to transactions just below that category there is a description to tell you what this category is all about so this is about receipts or orders and deliveries keep track of your orders including shipping and delivery notices bundled by sender and if we go to the next category that's updates which has to do with news subscriptions and social and it helps you stay updated with the place for everything including newsletters and alerts the next one is promotions that has to do with special offers deals and more and see what's new for businesses and organizations you recognize and of course if i unclick this after promotions the next one is all mail and under this category you can see this shows all your messages show messages from every category listed together for a quick glance at your inbox personally for me i actually ended up disabling the mail categories because i found that it was making me miss a couple of emails so i turned it off and it's a good thing that apple gives you the option to actually show or disable the categories if you are into emojis i'm happy to let you know that as part of unicode 16 standard apple has added nine new emojis so the first one you can see bags under eyes the second one is this fingerprint we have a leafless tree a rootless plant we have the harp musical instrument we also got the shovel which i'm surprised it actually wasn't existing we have splatter an updated sock flag and we also have an updated syrian flag to depict that which is current within the photos app i'm happy to let you know that they've actually made a new update the first time you open it you're actually going to see a new splash screen that's going to tell you what's new and at the same time we have an option for memories which allows you to create memory movies you can manually select or you can use Apple intelligence to describe a memory and then it will give you the ability to create that memory movie with just a description and then on the top corner you can see what you've created and you can sort between those two options by going to the all memories within the photos albums they've also made some minor changes when it comes to how you can sort and edit which is a new addition that's appreciated if you're trying to import your photos from your iPhone to your Mac using wired or wireless means if you have photos that are in in a hidden folder on your iPhone and you have in the iPhone settings the setting that allows you to use face ID to access those hidden photos now when you import photos from your iPhone to your Mac it's actually not going to include the hidden photos which I think is a good addition for privacy and security the podcast app has also been updated it now has a new version when you go to the about podcast which you can see right there and at the same time they have also made an addition where 
now when you are typing you get suggestions depending on the prompts that you are typing to give you appropriate podcasts that you can select and help you find what you are looking for much faster if you go to the edit widget section and you actually type podcast you can see we have a various number of widgets that are available for podcast that we can now select right there and you can now drag it and add it to your home screen or pin it to your notification sidebar if this is something that you are into one of the things that actually i'm disappointed in is the fact that we actually don't have music yet you can see youtube music and you know documents have their own respective music but the official apple music widget doesn't have anything i know that we can access like some sort of quick controls from this control center but at the same time you can't drag it and add it like below your battery or on your home screen for that quick access control so if someone from the apple team is watching i think it wouldn't hurt to get the apple music widget on the mac as well if you are into gen emoji i'll be happy to let you know that it has now slightly been updated you can see the icon has been updated slightly and now when you click on it it says start with a few words Words or a phrase that best describes your idea and from my testing and experience when it comes to some of the gen emojis that I've created and been able to do throughout the test it actually doesn't seem to be any faster than the previous version image playground has also been updated now when you open it it will still tell you that it's in beta and may create unexpected results but the update that has been added now when you go into the style you can now choose between animation illustration and sketch these first two were existing and the new one is the sketch option you can see when i select the sketch and give the image a few minutes <laughs> this is what it generates on the sketch if i go to the illustration give it a few seconds you'll be able to see what it generates i think illustration actually looks good and then if i go to animation those were the results and of course it will continue to create multiple variations of that as you can see right there by the way this update is the one that brings apple intelligence to the greater part of the eu or most countries in europe and now it features support for eight additional languages and two additional English localities, including English India, English Singapore, and then French in France and French in Canada, among other additional languages such as German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, Simplified Chinese, and Spanish. I'm not sure if you noticed, but for most Apple intelligence features that I mentioned, such as Gen Emoji, Image Playground, among others, I started with the words, if you are into it, cause as it seems at this point in time with the way Apple intelligence is working not a lot of people are actually impressed or fans of it and a lot of users are actually turning it off and during the testing of this mac os update apple intelligence was actually switched on by default irregardless of whether you had previously turned it off so you might want to go into your setting and then go to apple intelligence and siri and see if this is the setting that you want or you had set by default before you update it. Just as an update as well, if you are into the storage and you're curious how much Apple Intelligence is going to be taking for you compared to the previous update, you can see Mac OS for me is taking this much, but the storage that now Apple Intelligence is taking with this Mac OS 15.4 compared to Mac OS 15.3 is actually more than double. Before I used to average about 5.2 gigs, but now with this mac os 15.4 it's averaging about 11.5 gigs within the apple news app they've also made additional changes especially if you are an apple news plus subscriber they've added this food category that you can now customize and sort according to your need and this section is going to give you access to tens of thousands of recipes restaurants reviews kitchen tips and more right from the news app in the apple news plus food section apple intelligence now comes to the apple vision pro with the latest vision os 2.4 and there's a new guest mode that you can access and since you can actually mirror certain parts of your apple vision pro to your mac you'll actually be able to see those changes is once you mirrored or once you update your vision pro and then you connect it to your mac within the password app which i actually have open right now you can see if you go to the code section they've now added a status indicator that sort of shows you how much time has transpired before the codes change 
or it shows you how much time has elapsed so that you can find out whether you have enough time to copy and paste at the appropriate site or application and this is a good visual representation right here shortcuts has also been updated and when you open it some users have reported that they see a new splash screen but now it's been updated to give you more automation and they've also added app specific shortcuts that you can initiate and set up different actions right there at some point during my testing of this update there was code that suggested that apple will no longer work with the old home kit architecture and if that's the case for you this is the message that you'll be getting to notify you of what to do apple recently released this new sky blue macbook air it's the first time that the macbook air is actually available in this sky blue color and because of that if you go into your system settings right there and then go to the wallpapers you'll be able to see the radio sky blue has been added as a wallpaper that you can now select. Now, during the testing phase of this update, some Macs were actually missing the decryption keys of this update, thereby meaning they couldn't update to it. But now with the official release, it's been fixed. So if you have the M4 MacBook Air or the Mac Studio that has the M3 Ultra or the M4 Max chip, you will also be able to get this update. So that has been fixed. Included in the firmware update with macOS Sequoia 15.4, Apple actually updates their hardware with lossless audio and ultra low latency and that is the AirPod Max that have been updated and now what this means is that the highest quality of audio in movies and games can be enjoyed by users and creators can experience significant enhancements to songwriting, beat making, production and mixing. So if you have the AirPods Max, there might be a new firmware update for your AirPods so that it's compatible with this new lossless audio and ultra low latency feature that has been added. Within the Apple App Store, I'm happy to let you know that recently they actually added Resident Evil 3, a game that was highly anticipated for the Mac, so it's available. You can download it and at the same time, if you use Final Cut Pro, I'll be happy to let you know that the Final Cut version was actually recently updated a couple days ago and they've improved the magnetic mask alongside the Apple Intelligence integration with image play playground among other changes for Final Cut Pro. If you have an Apple Silicon Mac, which I feel like most users that are actually updating right now have an Apple Silicon Max with an internal SD card reader, I'll be happy to let you know that now those Mac supports an SDUC or secure digital ultra capacity cards larger than two terabytes. So these are just like 256, but if you have two terabytes or more, they now have the ability to be able to support and read and send or interact with those SD cards. There's a couple of things that this update actually fixes. For once, if you were experiencing visualization issues with an M4 Mac, then those have been resolved as well. If your internet was slowing down or you couldn't completely at all connect to the internet with a VPN enabled, this update addresses that issue. At some point during the testing, this update actually broke FaceTime, which I have open right now. So when it was broken, it wouldn't see any input video source or input audio source. But now, as you can see, that has been fixed and it should be working good for you now. In the Apple Mail app, which is with this exact version that releases with macOS 15.4, they fixed an issue that affected mail summaries. And now if you are not getting your email summarized properly, that should be a thing of the past. If you play games on your Mac using certain controllers, there actually was an issue where certain game controllers, whether it's Xbox or PlayStation, would disconnect when certain accessibility features were enabled or accessed and that has been fixed. I don't have the, I couldn't find my Xbox controller, but technically this keyboard can also be used as a controller. But I actually didn't experience any issues with my Apple Magic keyboard. One of the most important page to actually visit after you update is the Apple security releases page which is a publicly available website so this one will tell you what are the CVE entries or the security patches that this update has to offer you can see for macOS 15.3.2 we got those and there was you know a WebKit vulnerability issue that was exploited so do check this update to see what Apple has addressed when it comes to the latest macOS update 
just to keep you in the loop there's a few updates that are coming to your mac and some of them have to do with additional apple arcade games such as space invaders that are coming in april and at the same time if you are waiting for the next big thing when it comes to mac os it's going to be mac os 16 at wwdc 2025 and that is going to come out for the first developer beta on june 9 and for most of us that's when we'll be putting our macs to the new mac os 16 and as a quick interesting note so solorium is the code name for the ios 19 and mac os 16 redesigns explain a lot about what's to come solorium i think means like transparency or natural light i'm not sure if apple is going to be more transparent with their new ios 19 or mac os 16 update but this is just a quick update for you as to what we could be getting when it comes to the new mac os 16 and i'm not sure what the name of the new mac os version is going to be maybe mammoth or something like that but if you have an idea or you want to put your guesses in the comments below feel free to do so other than that I basically live life on the beta and when the next update comes out, I'll definitely be jumping on it with my uh, Mac that I use to test these updates on a daily. If that's something that you want to follow and uh, get to know the new features and changes within these updates, do hit like and subscribe and uh, let's go for the journey together. Peace.